is up, everybody? So today is the first episode of the podcast. Super excited to do this. Been real. I wanted to do this for a really, really long time. Probably gonna stutter a little bit, so you know, cut me some slack. But uh, here we go. So uh, the reason why I wanted to start this podcast is uh, I've been a barber for the last four or five years. Uh, I've been cutting hair, and uh, uh, <laughs> we got this. We got this. So I've uh, been cutting hair for about five years and every time somebody would come into the door and then they would tell their story and then their story would be so uh, interesting and then you could learn so much from it that uh, I'm like, I got to tell this to other people and then that's where like the idea of the podcast came in and then it was almost like a seed, like I, I really didn't see it that I was going to do this but eventually I kept growing, growing, growing and every day somebody would come in and tell me their crazy ass story and I'm like, wow, we gotta tell this to other people. So what is the best way to tell stories uh, and then you know, kind of spread it into the masses is podcasting or any other domain of the internet. So here we are and uh, our first guest today is, uh, know him for quite some time, full name is Jahanzeb Choktai. Choktai? Chuk Dai, got that. But we call him Zabe, uh, as you can tell, because I don't even know his full name. But yeah, so we call him Zabe. Uh, one th- a little bit about Zabe is, uh, super interesting dude. Uh, like I said, known him for a couple of years, started cutting him in my old, old shop, like the first shop that I ever worked at. But uh, interesting person. But one thing that really struck with me, and then as I'm like, you know, kind of prepping towards like, having him on the show I'm like yo what should I talk about like what what makes him so interesting that I should have him on the show and uh, as I'm thinking and for a couple of days I was literally stuck I'm like okay I can't say this I can say that da, 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 da. but when I first told him about the idea I'm like yo I'm starting a podcast and he's like cool like right off the bat super encouraging and uh, he's like oh like what are you gonna do it how are you gonna do it he wasn't just like oh Oh yeah, do it. I don't really care. But he was super interested in it. And he's like, okay, yo, like, what are you going to do? And I'm like, would you be interested in being the first guest? Again, didn't hesitate right off the bat. He's like, yo, let's do this. Like, I'm in. And uh, he started encouraging me. And then, yeah, just a person that wants other people to do better, encourages you. And I'm like, this guy's super easy to talk to. Like, it'll be the best first uh, host, not host, guest. As you can tell, first episode, we're going to get better. But yeah, uh, best guest to have on the first episode. So we're going to get into it. And his story is pretty unique, too. And then as I was kind of pondering on like different ideas to talk throughout the whole podcast, he, he told me a couple of things that I didn't even know before that. I'm like, this is perfect. Because at the end of the day, the only thing that we learn from, or one of the only things that we learn from is through other people's experiences. And his experiences are, I think, unique. But they also relate to other people too. So I think other people will be, will will really find it useful to them. So as he tells his own story and where he's been, where he's from, and what he's been through and where he is right now, will be super beneficial to other people. Again, we're not really here to um, give you advice, but we're just sharing our story through storytelling, of course. And uh, hopefully, and then our intentions are. Uh, helping people at the end of the day and then we hope that it helps people but most importantly we're gonna have some fun so as you're saying like you know their nerves are coming down and we're getting into the group but so here we are so Zave, come on in have a seat and yeah thank you my man appreciate you being here, be brother. here brother good to be here. thank you i appreciate that really um touching touching yeah uh, you know gesture that you had for me i was actually um very very overwhelmed by it i think that you have given me too much credit for something like that moving but moving a little bit sorry to cut you off but yeah okay. so uh, again this show is like li- literally unscripted even though we i was saying that i was pondering different ideas if just to talk about different ideas but yeah here we are and then uh are. uncut unscripted and we're just having some fun and talking shit over so that's what we're gonna do but today. yeah that's what we do so again man thank you for being here i thank really you so appreciate much, it thank we're not gonna make it like super like uh conservative and then like oh like ah Never speak that. your mind yeah, yeah. And always then, yeah always, always yeah just move move this just a little bit but yeah you're good okay. i know you need some space and shit but yeah no we got this so yeah man how was your day what are you been um, up to 
So, uh, you know, I don't want to start off with being too hectic, but yeah. I was telling you how um, over the weekend yeah. uh, I had a little bit of a situation at home with my grandmother, mm -hmm. and um, she unfortunately uh, passed away um, on Friday, and um, it was a little hard on our family, but, uh, you know, we're making it, and uh, we're doing good. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom is obviously, you know, very hurt by it, and uh, of course. my nanny, she was, uh, I was very close to her as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, our last memories are maybe in 2012 when I went for a wedding in Pakistan. Yeah. And uh, it's of us playing Ludo. So other than that, my friend, uh, life's been good. I'm on my last semester of university. Solid. Uh, what are you studying? I'm studying business administration. Solid. So to everybody who doesn't know me, mm -hmm. I am uh, 25 year old, years old. I am finishing up university at the moment because yeah. um, I was a truck driver at the age of 19 for my family. I did not know that. You don't know what? I was at 19? I, I didn't know you were a truck driver at 19. Oh my <laughs> God. And look at him. He's he, like, got, like I said, a perfect gift to have. Like he's explaining like, this is who I am. Right, right. But yeah, keep going. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah. 19 year old? 19 years old. Truck man. driver. I got my license wow. at 19. It was an experience because... Yeah. So I'm getting my license, okay? okay? You have to learn on a manual, okay, manual truck. Yeah, yeah. So I'm learning on a manual truck. Oh now, I don't God. know Punjabi. I'm Urdu speaking, mm -hmm. right? But my trainers were Punjabi people, right? Yeah, all of them, so yeah. So first of all, I love, I love all brown people, obviously. Uh -huh. Like, we're, we're all, we're all stupid at the end of the day. <laughs> we all got our stupid. No, uh, yeah, it no one's perfect. Me. Yeah, yeah. But, uh. They're, they were like my dad, so, yeah. you know, like, my dad is really bad at teaching people what to do, you know, if, if you can't learn from his ways, he yells at you, you know, his, his second uh, teaching method yeah, is yeah. he'll start yelling. Yeah. So, um, I was learning how to reverse a truck uh -huh. and uh, put it into first gear and second gear, right? Okay. Now, I know how to drive manual, I uh -huh. just don't know how to drive a truck manual. Okay. Because it's different, okay? You of have course. to do it at a certain RPM, otherwise the uh -huh. gear doesn't shift, whatever. Yeah. But and, yeah, keep talking, uh, you're good. So, what I have to do is uh, I'm learning how to drive yeah and uh, I don't know how to put it in the first gear this guy's speaking Punjabi to me yeah. and I don't know a word he's saying yeah so I tell him I don't know what you're saying <laughs> I look at him he looks back and he starts yelling it to, and I'm like I still don't understand what you're saying I'm like yeah. please you know you're just yelling you're saying the same thing you said the same words I just don't know what you're saying yeah but eventually I got the hang of it got my uh, license yeah and uh, yeah I started uh, trucking at uh, got my license at 19 trucking at 20 till I was uh, 22 years old. In that time, I did, um, I trucked by myself for a few months. I did, that was hard. Uh, by myself was definitely um, an experience because it was, first of all, night shifts. So definitely you harder, had to yeah. sleep in the day and yeah. you're 20 years old, so you don't sleep during the day. Yeah. You know, you, as soon as the sun hits you, you're awake, you're ready uh -huh. to go. Yeah. And then at nights, you're always drowsy, you're yeah. tired. Yeah. And it was winter time, so uh, you know, when the heating is on, it makes you drowsy, makes you want to sleep anyways. Yeah. But uh, I did about five months of those. It was within Canada because mm -hmm. I couldn't go outside of Canada because mm -hmm. you have to, if you want to drive in the States, you have to be 21. Okay. We didn't know that. Okay. We were actually driving at yeah. the age of 20 in uh -huh. the States when I first began. Yeah. And one of the custom border guys, he stopped us and he's like, how old are you? I'm like, I'm 20. And he's like, you have to be 21 to drive. And I'm like, no, you don't. You have to be 18. Because that's what I thought, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like, no, you have to be 21. Yeah. I'm letting you go this time. Uh -huh. But if I ever see you again, again. you're not going to, I'm not going to let you go yeah, through the border. Yeah. I'm going to take your license, right? Uh -huh. So a few months later, guess who we see? We see the same guy. <laughs> oh, so you didn't stop. You're like, no, 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 we didn't stop. Like, yeah, we didn't stop because we thought it was 18. Yeah. And he didn't confirm that it was 21. Yeah, yeah. He just said it was 21. Okay. So we're like, okay, you don't know your stuff. We don't yeah, know yeah, our yeah. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Meet halfway, you know, like. Not oh, 18, man. not 21, I'm 20, yeah. we'll do it. Yeah. So my dad said, fuck it, let's keep going. Uh huh. So we're going, and this guy, we finally get him after a few months, yeah. right? It, right away, he sees me and he knows who I am yeah. because I'm so young, of right? Course. I'm like this skinny little talk. guy. Yeah, I have yeah, no yeah, facial yeah. Yeah. So he's like, pull over to the side. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> right away, my dad oh, and I, we looked at each other, we're like, we're fucked, man. Like, so you were with your dad this time right now? So yeah, yeah. when we were driving in the yeah. States, me and my dad were doing it okay. together. Cool, but cool. when I was doing it in Canada, okay. which I'm about to get to, is yeah. I was doing it by myself. Yeah. So they held us for like five hours, you know. What they do is they're actually pricks. So they take yeah. out all, all the stuff of your truck. They take it out. Uh -huh. Take out the entire load that's in your trailer. They Holy inspect shit. it. Yeah. They're just BSing. Exactly. They just want you to wait. And then after five hours, they called us in. Yeah. And they're like, 
we're not taking your license away. Yeah. Because we don't want you to work at McDonald's or yeah, something yeah. like that, right? Uh-huh. Like we're gonna do you a favor. Today. Okay, there, buddy. You yeah. Canadians, right? Yeah. I'm like, all right, bro. All right, you're gonna do me a favor. Sure, sure. Yeah. And he's like, we're gonna let you keep your license, but you're not allowed in the states. Uh huh. Until you're 21. Okay. And he's like, we're putting it on your, you know, profile. If you come in, you know, it's gonna be a red flag. They're gonna know. Yeah. I was like, all right, whatever. Cool. So we stopped. Uh, you know, my dad was a little upset, but the guy that we were working for, mm-hmm. he's like, I can get him a job within the industry, but it's just gonna be like night shifts, right? Okay. So it was local, but I had to stay away from home for four days. Mm-hmm. So in the beginning, it was hard yeah. because I'm a completely new driver. Of course. And I don't know when things go wrong in a truck. I only know how to drive one, you know? Yeah. I don't know what yeah, goes yeah, wrong. Yeah. You don't know anything. Yeah. You just know how, you know what to do. So when stuff started going wrong in the middle of the night, I didn't know who to call. So yeah. I started calling my boss and mm-hmm. he was very helpful, but... Yeah. Um, you know you're 20 years you old, man. You have no you're freezing. Blow. Yeah, I'm a skinny guy. I'm trying to jump on this part of the trailer. That's this metal part. It shifted completely different than what it was supposed to be. Uh-huh. I'm jumping on it, and my and my uh, boss is like, "Jump harder!" Like, jump. jump. What do you mean? He's like, he's like, "You need to jump on it for it to fix itself." And I'm yeah. like, "I don't know. I, like, I'm jumping on it. It's not working." But oh eventually, I kept hopping on it, like literally for yeah. five minutes until it bent the way that it needed to bend, and uh, I was on my way. So, the beginning of my career was so extremely hard because i had to do it by myself yeah and in the cold so it was you know god god was like i'm gonna test you to Mm -hmm. the fullest okay and anyways uh night shifts were really hard for me uh at that time i was seeing somebody Uh uh-huh and um you know kudos to her she was there for me yeah yeah and through thick and thin um Uh we had recently just started seeing each other but we hit it off you know it was a good thing and uh, she was always, um, you know, on the phone with me. Are you guys still together? Or no, 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 no. Okay, okay. Was. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, yeah, a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep, yeah. yeah keep 20, yeah. Five years, right? Yeah. yeah. But uh, uh, at that time, I guess that she was meant to be in my life, yeah, you know? Yeah. With some people just at a part and just yeah. are in your life to support mm-hmm. you. Yeah. And uh, she was there and uh, she really helped me out. She was on the phone a lot yeah. with me and uh, kept me company. So I wasn't alone. Mm-hmm. Um, and to this day, I'm always like appreciative of the fact that you know I had somebody to support me when I was by myself. Uh, but anyways, I started to kind of um, get depressed, I would say, you know, because when you're working night shifts, yeah, yeah, and you don't get to see your family and your friends yeah, are going to school, uh, partying, yeah, yeah. Uh, or just hanging out, and you're not there, you're, Mofo. you know, you're completely yeah. away. Oh, FOMO, so, sorry, yeah, not FOMO. FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was. Uh, it was a very hard experience because yeah. I would say that um, I, um, I've i been depressed before that, uh-huh. but it wasn't to this extent where it was I was alone, you know? Yeah. Like, I was still around my family uh-huh. before, but this was to the point where um, I was by myself. I didn't know, I didn't want to call anybody, you mm-hmm. know? Why would I cry to people on the yeah, phone? Yeah. I was crying to myself uh, in the daytime, at the nighttime. It was crazy because before I would go to bed, I would cry myself to bed because I'd be like, I hate my life right now, but I have to do it. Because 20 years my, old, yeah. 20 years yeah. old. I have to, you know, help my family with finances, so mm-hmm. I had to do it. And I, I loved the fact that I was helping of them. Course. I just didn't love what I was doing. Of course. And there was no other quick money. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then at night when I started to drive, I used to, you know, I used to cry before I started yeah. driving. So it was a very tough time. Uh, I had support from uh, the dispatchers there, you know, okay. they, I was the youngest in the company. They totally, didn't hire yeah. before 24 yeah. and I was the youngest. So they're like, you're a kid to yeah. us, right? So they always helped me out, gave me coffee, you know, were there for me, uh, always supported me through everything. Um, and uh, one day it got to the point where, um, like I was crying every day, right? Yeah. I was just completely depressed. I hated myself. I just wished, you know, something would happen to me. So my parents don't have an excuse. They don't think that I'm making it an excuse to want to stop working that job wow because you know brown parents they're yeah, like yeah. oh you know you're just lazy that's yeah, why you yeah, don't want yeah, a truck yeah. you know, you're young you yeah. should you should be on this day and of night right? you're just driving yeah, you know, yeah, that's yeah, all yeah. it is uh no it's way more than yeah, that yeah. You know, it's a it's a mental game and of i course. wasn't there yet yeah um but eventually uh i prayed to god one day and uh, it's i guess you could say it was a miracle that I did feel something, you know, maybe people who don't believe in it or yeah. whatever you call it, BS, you can call it whatever you yeah, want, yeah. but I felt something that day. Uh, I just felt like I was, I wasn't alone, but I was, yeah, right? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. crying. I, I was praying. I was for a moment. I felt like I wasn't alone. Yeah. And, uh, that was my last day trucking. So I went home, right? 
and uh, I'm, I call my manager uh, or my uh, my boss up, and I'm like, hey, so for Monday, like, when am I leaving, right? When no. should I be leaving? Yeah. And he's like, oh, um, you know, the company they hired internally, so they don't need you as a driver anymore. Wow. And I was like, that all happened in two in days. Two days, yeah. I was like, he's like, yeah, he's like, just they randomly just call me up, and they're like, you know, this is what happened. I was like, no way. And to me, wow. that was just such a gift of God because of now course. my yeah, parents yeah. can't blame me. Yeah. You know, they can't be like, oh, because of you, right? And I'm like, yo, the company hired yeah, internally. Yeah. It's not my fault. So I had a couple of months off after that uh-huh. where um, I, you know, uh, started seeing my friends again. Mm-hmm. Uh, but even my friends, my my straight boys from day one, they were yeah. they were like, you kind of, you know, you're more quiet. Yeah, you. I, was, uh, I was a lot more jolly, I guess, mm-hmm. or talkative. Yeah. Uh, but to me, I guess I just, I would say it was a sign of maturity. You know, when you don't have people, you think more to yourself before you say anything. Yeah. And uh, if there's anything that you and I both would tell our audience is to always think before talking. Hundred percent. Because as 100%. I've known you for the past like two, three years, man, yeah. uh, I've loved talking to you about mm-hmm. that. You know, we always talk mm-hmm. about it. We always course, get into our philosophical yeah, conversations. Yeah, yeah. I love it. And uh, it's because we both think before we talk. Hundred percent. And that's how you connect. You have to make sure that you're on the same level, same page, uh, no matter who you're talking to. Of right? course. Of course. And uh, this is key. It's a, it's a skill that people should have in their life. It's a life skill because um, when you're talking to anybody, mm-hmm. right, you have to adapt to their personality. You have to make sure that you win them over. Mm-hmm. Right? You're selling yourself. It's a business after all. You're selling yourself to totally, anybody yeah. you meet in this world, even if it's your parents yeah, or yeah. anybody you've got to sell yourself. So, um, yeah, key lesson, guys. Think before you talk and um, always adapt to your environment and see who you're talking to before you, uh, you know, start expressing your strong personality. You don't want to overwhelm them. Right, you want to make sure that you're easing into that conversation. Totally. So, uh, completely off topic. No, no, no. But like, <laughs> no, no, no. Just like uh, I'm just gonna back it up a little bit. Uh, like not too much, but mm-hmm. I totally understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Think before you speak. Totally agree with it. Mm-hmm. Easing your way into the conversation. Agree with it too. But uh, like, kind of disagree with the fact that you have to win people over because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, I I know what you mean and I know where you're coming from. Yeah. Uh, totally a good place, but like. Just to clear things up and put things into context, I don't think so. You have to win people over. I think you have to win yourself over first. Be yourself first. So for me, it was the biggest thing. I think when things really started turning around for me, Alhamdulillah, was uh, when I started being myself. Super cliche, super. Uh, That's what we are, bro. Yeah. No, no, exactly. <laughs> but it's fast. No, but like th- these like conventional wisdom, they've been going on for such a long time. Yeah. Like, oh, do this, like do that, and then like work hard or. Uh, like it's like going to the gym right like you 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 have to you the the simple things are there which are gonna get you healthy so it's just like that in life too uh so be yourself has been there for such a long time but yeah so just going back is you don't necessarily have to win people over mm-hmm. win yourself over first mm-hmm. but of course adapt to the conversation and the, to the people but don't change your values or who you are mm-hmm. Just to fit into the bubble because sometimes you're meant to break out of it. And even me doing this is like breaking out of the whole freaking uh, comfort zone or whatever the, yeah. the, the hell it is. Is uh, Yeah, like, because we define ourselves uh, as like our, our, yeah, when we define ourselves, we put these like experiences into one thing and we just think we're that. And once you get into that bubble and you don't break out of it, you don't become anything else. And then, yeah, but... No, Most no, of the no. stuff that you talked about, mm-hmm. completely like, completely agree with mm-hmm. it. But just for myself, and at the end of the day, right? It's a discussion. Like we, we can respect each other's opinion. I feel like yeah. we. I didn't clarify enough. I yeah. do agree with you on that. Yeah. By, by, getting other, <clears throat> selling yourself to other people. I yeah. mean, uh, I guess maybe it was more of a business term. Yeah. Totally get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. If somebody doesn't vibe with you. Yeah. For who you are. Yeah. That's definitely not your environment. Totally. You know what it, I mean? Yeah. Uh, but for me, I'm thinking in the aspect that, you know, because I'm always going to have to sell myself because yeah. of my business mentality, of whatever course, you want to call course, it. Of course, of course, of course. I totally care where right? you're coming from. Yeah. So it's like, whoever you meet, yeah. you know, even if it's a bad person, you just got to make sure that you have an impact on them. Yeah. That makes them want to be a better person okay. themselves, you know? Hey, that's, that's good. That's, yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. it. I love it. You yeah. have to do that. And, yeah. uh, and I guess by selling yourself, that's what I meant. Yeah, you know, 100%. like you got to make sure that you impact the mm-hmm. individual that you're having a conversation yeah. with uh, to the point where they are starstruck by you you know they're like, like okay that, yeah. this is this is an individual that is going to do something in of life, course you know yeah and uh that's just the way it is and 
uh, that's what I learned from trucking because I had so much time to myself uh -huh. that I would think about everything bad about me. You know? Of course. There's nobody else there. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, Zabe, what is bad about you? Why are you impatient in these yeah, situations? Yeah, yeah. How can you make it better? Uh -huh. uh, how are you with your parents? Yeah. You know, let's... And I used to play scenarios in my head because I wasn't around my parents. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> I'd be living it. Yeah. And it'd be like, okay, now they're, uh, they're yelling at me. What do you do next, right? This is what you don't do. Yeah, yeah. This is how you're gonna do it, uh -huh. okay? And then even... I have to make it so realistic for myself that... I'm like... Uh, I probably need to edit that, but I won't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had a, I had a great, time. <laughs> great time driving. Yeah. Uh, again, that was God sent because we got a new dispatcher and the guy looks at me, literally just analyzes me. Yeah. And the first question he asks yeah. me is, do you like to travel? And I'm like, hell, I yeah. love to travel, bro. Oh my He's like, God. do you mind if I send you to like Arizona? I'm like, is that even a question? Anywhere. I'm like, yeah. California, send Arizona, anywhere. send me there. Yeah. And that's what he did. He sent me to all the southern states, although my dad wasn't a big fan yeah. of it. I was. I didn't care, you know. Uh -huh. Uphill driving was difficult because it weighs you down. Uh -huh. Downhill, your truck is bolting at like 160 because all that weight is pulling yeah. you out. Like, you're going down. But, uh, man, it was an adventure. And uh, at 22, that's when I started um, going to university. Okay. Because I was like, you know what? I have so much experience with trucking that, inshallah, maybe one day I yeah. can start my own business. Of right? course. Uh, it's uh, it's probably, I would say, one of the easiest but most hardworking businesses. Yeah, I, I've actually seen people have toilets and showers in their trucks. I believe it. Yeah. I believe it. They extend it. They modify their tractor, the front part of the truck. Yeah. And uh, they get a toilet at it and yeah. a shower. Wow. But that's like some... Go to look. That's like straight. Oh my like, god! I have not seen a yeah, brown person just do it. Gora, just a go But it's just a go to. Oh doing my god! It. I'm dead. Uh, but that's uh, because like you know they it, yeah. yeah they live on the road. Yeah, they yeah, live they on live the on the road. road. Yeah. All they do is truck. They get that money. Yeah. You know they uh, go to strip clubs. Whatever the hell they do yeah, all yeah, on the yeah, road. Yeah. It's all on the road. Uh -huh. Uh, so, but it's really uh, interesting to interact with those people on the uh -huh. road because they're, uh, you know, you meet racist people. Of course. And uh, you meet some people who are always like, oh, what is this skinny little kid doing? Like, he's mm -hmm. incompetent, right? Yeah. But then you show them that you're also intelligent and yeah. you know what you're doing. Yeah. So they respect you. Of course. And uh, I learned a lot in that trucking business on how to be a man, mm -hmm. I would say, you know. how Define to that. How to be a man like, in the well, sense like, that hardworking, uh -huh. uh, respectful, okay. you know, powerful in the sense that you have to let other people know, but in a very subtle way okay. that, you know, do not disrespect me. Of I'm course. not, I'm not, you know, uh, inferior to yeah. who you are, you know, we're on the same level, yeah. you know, respect me as yeah. I respect you. Of course. And uh, that is how you become a man in my uh -huh. opinion. Yeah. Uh, to be a man is not to backfight behind a person's back. You know? totally, Confront the issue, totally man. Agree. Be yeah. mature. Yeah, yeah. You have to be mature about it. And always speak your mind, but in a very gentle way, you know, mm -hmm. let them know what you're thinking in a very yeah. respectful way. Mm -hmm. That shows them what kind of a man you are. They don't have to be these. You already know. You and yeah, I. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. You don't yeah, have to be yeah, these yeah, to yeah. do this. You don't yeah. gotta be, you know, tall or yeah. whatever, a basketball yeah. player yeah, to be yeah, respected. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, you'll be respected just for your personality, how you live your life, 100%. and um, how you carry yourself. Amen. Amen to that, brother. Amen. No, I to I totally agree with. And we are back. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was just a time. Yeah, 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 just a timer, I think. But yeah, I don't even know how long it's been. But yeah, okay, yeah, we're pretty good. We're looking good. What are we looking at? We're looking at 30, I think, or 40, something like that. Time passes by, man. But yeah, like like I said, like, you know, just have fun. Just do this shit. But yeah, like, backbiting, I hate it. Mm -hmm. I, fr I freaking hate it. Where's my water bottle? Right here. They're both right no, here. No, no, this one, yeah. But yeah, I freaking hate like backbiting. People do it so often; it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that like um, it, it gets you nowhere. Like you're not doing anything yeah. to anybody. You if you the only thing that you're doing is taking time away from yourself. Ah yeah, man. And then Thinking just like about other people yeah, and shit about them. Yeah, well, you could be working on yourself or working on your dream, whatever exactly. you or finding your passion. Yeah, yeah. Instead, you're talking about somebody that you probably despise. Yeah, and, you're and jealous it's of. yeah, That's and what it's, it is. Yeah. yeah. Because why else would you hate on anybody? You you because you, know? you, you hate, on, yeah. hate on yourself. Yeah. Like you don't like yourself. Yeah. You don't like that part be, of you. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. So like that like you know it it makes it come out of you like yo what he has I don't have so I'm gonna hate him exactly. rather than learn from him mm -hmm. and which is like such a backward approach to it it's ridiculous. <laughs> and a lot of guys have that. It's, like yeah you know, like yeah. I've learned that in my uh, in my working days that yeah. uh, guys our age I get that some guys are grown up differently they have different lifestyles yeah. you know um some don't have keep talking but yeah some don't have uh all the people that they uh 
you know, like their parents around them or they they have working parents and uh, they just kind of grow up with the community that they're in. And sometimes the community is, it's not a good community. So when it's not a good community, uh, you know, some, some guys become hard asses, right? They're like, oh, emotions, yuck. Like, I never want to talk about that, right? Emotions, or I'm a, I'm a man, man, yeah. men don't talk about yeah. emotions, you know? Or uh, sense of style, yeah. you know? It's like, oh, you're wearing skinny jeans. Like, uh -huh. what are you, a woman or something? Like, <laughs> I see that all the yeah, time. It's yeah, it's like, it doesn't work like that, yeah. you know? Um, it's all in the head. It's This is where you become a man, not your exterior, you know, your soul, your energy has to come off in such a way where that's intimidating to people if you really want to become intimidating. Yes, you know? yeah. Or if you just want to become a very peaceful, gentle man, you know, you can also show that yeah. and uh, show your uh, intense, uh, you know, whatever crazy side yeah. in a different way. Of course. Instead of being physical mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, swear. Like, I swear all the time. I'm not. Yeah, no. But that's not to show, exactly. you know, my masculinity or whatever, exactly. or whatever. It's always, yeah. it's just how I talk. Uh -huh. uh, but, uh, you know, I've dealt with some uh, situations where um, I had to deal with a couple of people uh, talking behind my back of that course. I didn't know were talking behind my back. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't think they would be talking about yeah. behind my back because yeah. I thought we were friends. Exactly. So, it, you splash, yeah. not your friend, but yeah. So, like, one of my friends tells me uh -huh. that these guys are talking smack, right? Uh -huh. And I go from having no drama in my life to all of a sudden being dropped in the middle of drama. Yeah, now I have yeah. to figure out why they have issue with uh -huh. me because I'm the type of guy to resolve the situation. Okay. You know, I don't want good, good I don't want them to resent yeah. me or hate me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, yo, if we have our differences, yeah. don't act like my friend then. Uh -huh. Just tell me what it is. Of course. And we'll go our separate ways. Of you course. Know, it's that simple. Don't of course. don't come at me with all this, you know, fake BS and smiles and stuff. But, and I'm thinking you're my boy, but at the end of the day, you're not, you know, so, um, but, uh, I respect everybody that I've, uh, had, you know, an altercation with, mm -hmm. um, we've gone our ways in a very mature manner. You know, I, uh, I would say that I'm proud of myself for dealing with that mm -hmm. in the way you did, in the way I did that showed me that, okay, I grew, you know, cause uh -huh. I haven't had a situation to actually grow from like something yeah, like that happened with my friends or anything. So. When that did happen, I was like, okay, wow, mm -hmm. I'm really dealing with this really well. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm patient about it. I'm yeah. thinking before I speak and I'm yeah. seeing that, you know, they're being defensive or uh, this is their personality. Yeah. They won't understand. Of course. So just get your point across yeah. and be done with it. 100%. Don't, don't waste their time. Don't waste your time. Yeah. Be to done with that BS. To totally agree. But like, I think, I think, what, again, why also people talk about like backbite, even that. Yeah, everybody or even like masculinity or like I'm mm. this or I'm that mm. or I want to show you who I am I think it relates back to like one of our needs which is uh, is being acknowledged or uh, like wow. you uh, being like you know I'm here uh, I'm, I'm looking for the word what's being the word visible or yeah visible? something like that uh, acknowledged would be significance the right oh okay okay okay, okay, okay. So, Good word, yeah. so yeah so when people want to feel significant mm -hmm. to like in their life or about themselves mm -hmm. which is such a shallow way to do it but like the like you, sh you shouldn't have to justify yourself to feel significant wow. in any other ways. But what people do is backbite, uh, get big, shout, yeah. uh, <laughs> or, or do all these crazy ass things and it gets them nowhere. And then it, it's, it's almost like a drug. You almost keep going back to it. They're going to keep talking about you if they don't change themselves. And hopefully yeah. I pray mm -hmm. that they do. But uh, wherever they are, don't know them. But yeah, it's just they're looking for significance. And, yeah. then, and then the only way to find it is to yourself inside of you and you have to see yeah. that's what people don't get the yeah. the thing that i got from trucking was yeah. time right i got i had two years to think to myself who has that in today uh -huh. like you're going you're cutting hair yeah, you're talking yeah. to other people you don't uh -huh. have time for yourself you know you're not thinking you gotta make you time home. you gotta fucking yeah. make time you gotta make time but uh, yo, me i just swore <laughs> and my parents went and watched <laughs> and i'm dead <laughs> but anyways um yeah man i had to make time you know i had nothing but time for myself yeah and that is one of the biggest blessings that i had yeah uh, when i talked to individuals who were older than me you know, yeah. the, in their late 20s or yeah. whatever they'd be like oh wow you're trucking you know that's a great opportunity of course well i at that time i was thinking of it negatively i'm like 100 percent. it's not a good opportunity 100%. You know, I'm just I'm depressed. Yeah. But what they said was, oh, you know, I wish I had those two years while making money for my family to think about what I wanted to do in life. Yeah. And they're like, you're so lucky that you found that. And I'm like, you know what? I think they're right. Maybe I should look into, into myself the, yeah. 
and figure out what I really want to do because this is the time to figure it out. So was that like starting when you started trucking or was that like those people came after? and then they, they came a gave little you... bit after. Okay. I would say give or take six months. Okay. So I had a year and a half after. to completely, you know, uh, transform myself okay. uh, into the passionate uh, man that I wanted to be. I yeah. wanted to be passionate about something at that yeah. time. I was just confused, you know. Uh, but I realized that business, I love business. I love talking to people, of communicating, yeah, yeah. Uh, traveling. So I tried to incorporate all of that yeah. into international business. <laughs> so that's what I'm finan- um, specializing in. Yeah. And um, it's a very broad field still. Of course, you, you know? can do anything uh, with it. But hey, man, you know what? I'm getting my degree. And how I look at my degree is, um, it's to other people, could be a stupid analogy, but I am currently fixing or making my plane okay and i'm totally, about to yeah. fly i'm about to soar you know? yeah yeah as soon as i get my degree yeah you know applying for jobs already getting yeah. there and inshallah go for those interviews and kill it man because that's because i know i've waited so long for it yeah. you know when you crave something and you can taste it it's uh-huh. like right there you know you're of like course. i'm so close patience yeah patience and then yeah. you know that you're about to beat the shit out of <laughs> that interview come at me bro oh, like man. you're my biggest and i yeah. will kill you so so like when, when you're going for like or when you kind of internalizing these interviews are you trying to do it like oh it's like a stepping stone or are you i'm gonna i'm gonna learn from mm-hmm. it or because i know you want to do like all sorts of business stuff right yeah. like uh, what's it called trucking business is mm-hmm. one of them mm-hmm. Or consulting, uh, mm-hmm. as you were talking yeah. about before the interview, or like, you know, when I cut your hair, it's like, oh, I want to do consulting and stuff. Mm-hmm. So what does that step look like? Like, uh, so w- what are you internalizing as you like? Well, you and I both already know that yeah. every step that we take is a growth. We have to learn, you know. Depends on so what it is. It depends on what it yeah. is. But an interview of that uh, scale, mm-hmm. I haven't been in. Yet, of course. Right? Where it's like four guys interviewing you, sometimes six, whatever it uh-huh. is. Uh, but... What I do know about myself is that I am willing to push myself to that limit Uh to see how far I can be tested. Totally. totally. And uh, I'm excited instead of nervous. Although I will be nervous too, but it's an exhilarating experience for me Uh because I know that that's when I'm going to learn. Of course. Because that's me stepping outside of my box Uh and seeing if I can kill it. And if I can't, I'm going to go back and learn what I didn't Mm -hmm. do good and learn it again, you Uh know, revise whatever I got to do. Go back in the yeah. second time, and this time with way more confidence. Of course. So they know who the hell they're dealing with, yeah. too. You know? And that's all it is, man. Those are stepping stones. Yeah. Uh, a job is also a stepping stone. Yeah. But it's for gaining network. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, of course. You, with your boss, whoever, yeah, man. Yeah. You meet so many, yeah, so many intellectual people who want to help other people yeah. who want to start their businesses, yeah, right? Yeah. So, man, for me, I think a corporate job is, for me, it would be necessary to... Uh, you know, advance. learn about other people yeah. in advance yeah. and see, uh, you know, what uh, other people are lacking and how I can even make their lives better. Or of course. What type of business that they need to help. Of course. Them, you know? So um, we're always growing and analyzing. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's all I'm doing at the moment, sitting back, yeah. uh, getting my degree, you know, yeah. finishing up this last semester. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a little overwhelming when you have anxiety, but... Um, Anxiety yes. for what? Like anxiety uh-huh. for like the future. Anxiety mm, for everything, uh, man. Like, <laughs> like so. So when you have those thoughts of anxiety or like you worry about certain mm-hmm. stuff, I, I need to hire somebody. But I probably Just won't do there, it for yeah. a while. T- yeah, but yeah. Uh, so when you have these like thoughts, everybody does. Yeah. I swear to God. Mm-hmm. So the the way I deal with it is. Like, even before starting this or we started before in anything or going to a party or something or something that I'm not comfortable with or I'm not too familiar with. Or if I meet a new person, but, like, the cutting has taught me to be comfortable with being uncomfortable with when meeting people. So it's super easy. But the way I do it is uh, I learned this. The way I, I learned this is... Uh, Literally. literally, literally, but that's what but it that's is, how, right? That's how, that's yeah, like, like there are so many gems that you said mm-hmm. in the freaking video mm-hmm. that people can take away from, yeah. and um, I think Instagram yeah. quote me, guys. Yeah, Instagram quote him. <laughs> like he's, he's gonna be famous. He's gonna be yeah. Uh, so yeah. You gotta yeah, call can, me back yeah. when you're famous, bro. Hundred yeah, percent. But at the end of the day, like of course, it's not about being famous. I know where you came from. Yeah, I, yeah but we both know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't have to yeah. explain anything. But uh, yeah, just just you know, even if you're uncomfortable, acknowledge it and just be like, I'm freaking comfortable. But like, what is your take? Okay, or how yeah, do you that's do what it? I was, yeah. Like so when you for get me, anxiety for, for anything, me, anxiety. Uh, I don't get anxiety when meeting people. Yeah. For me, it's school. Right. That, that was it's my thing deadline. in the beginning. Yeah. 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 For me, it's meeting my deadlines, yeah. and um, so I'm not, I'm not, I can't learn by reading. Okay? Yeah. I am a visual learner. Yeah. 
or more an audio. Like I need to, I can hear somebody and then it will be resonate in my of head course. way more. Yeah. So when I'm reading, I obviously zone out all the yeah. time, man. Uh -huh. It's really bad. Totally so get it. When you're writing an essay, yeah, and you have a deadline, yeah. but then you also have to write another essay. Uh -huh. When you have all these things, for me personally, and I yeah. actually talk to other people who have anxiety about the same thing. Yeah. Your brain shuts out. Shut it down. It's an old system shutdown. Literally, your brain shuts off. I've sat there for, and I'm not exaggerating, Mo, for two hours. Uh -huh. I can't, I've read two lines and I've written maybe one sentence because my brain is not working. Because and of the deadline. Because of the yeah, deadline, the because of the anxiety, because of the pressure of having uh, group projects and yeah, like, what yeah. is my group going to think, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that just, it just scares you because it's, sometimes it's like something you don't want to work on, but you know, you have to because you want to get your degree. Of course. Right? So you're bored. But at the same time, it's like, for me, I thought procrastination would work, right? Uh -huh. It didn't. So, um... It all anxiety kind of hit me because uh, of a, uh, another relationship that yeah, I was in. Yeah. I've been in a few relationships. Okay. But you know what? I've learned from every you're single learning, one. You're learning. You're testing. That's been crazy. You're man. testing. You're that's, learning, and you're gonna find the right one. With all great women too, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Very yeah. intellectual of women course. that have taught me so much. Yeah. So, um, but anyways, it was a little bit of an, a relationship issue, you know, uh, where my anxiety began. And uh, what, what was the reason with the um, relationship? Why was it was a anxiety? long distance relationship? Okay, so, you know, it, it becomes toxic where you're doubting each other constantly, yeah. and uh, just stuff went down. It was, you know, mostly my <laughs> fault, but it comes from both ways. Yeah. And uh, uh, if you can't learn to adapt with each other, which is really hard when you're doing long distance, 100%. Uh, it just kind of takes a toll on you, yeah, and that's kind of what happened. And it affected my studies mm -hmm. and uh i actually had a lot of hair fall during that time too it was really funny i thought I was you, you still got good hair you're good got, you, yeah, you're yeah, my yeah, cutter yeah, you know yeah. what i'm saying <laughs> so, you're good but i'm good i'm good uh but it was that's how it started and uh, where i'm at now is um how i deal with my anxiety is i will uh start my work two weeks in advance three weeks in good, advance. so good as soon as school starts or even yeah. before school starts yeah i have all my deadlines because your course outline comes out yeah yeah i note down every single date of every single nice. assignment with the week and the date that it's yeah, due, yeah. Right? and the percentage so mm -hmm. i know it's worth what it what i need to do mm -hmm. and as soon as the semester starts i start working on them yeah slowly uh -huh. so you know by the time that uh the deadline is yeah. i still get anxiety i just yeah. don't work on them last minute i finish them two days in advance mm -hmm. so that the day before it's due i just look over it mm -hmm. and that way i'm just proofreading and i'm not doing anything and i'm safe you know i can actually think on this and yeah. expand a little bit uh -huh. be confident in myself yeah uh so i realized uh at the moment working on essays last minute is not a thing for me that's good yeah like you figured your system out he's like okay well i get anxiety why do i get anxiety because of this and then you figured out a way to like kind of work it in your own scenario and you're like okay i, I gotta do this shit like mm -hmm. you know like far ahead than exactly the deadline. how to do it yeah so yeah so just figure out what the problem is